Hello, and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. We are Chaosium's official live play channel, and we're here every week playing Call of Cthulhu. My name's Dave, I'll be your Keeper of Arcane Lore, and I'm joined by three exceptional role players: Art, Jackson, and James. I was going to do a pointing thing, but I couldn't remember what side of the screen they're on. Uh, so on this stream, what we're doing is we're taking Call of Cthulhu scenario books and we're playing through them. Last time we played Amidst the Ancient Trees, which is the first scenario in the Keeper rulebook, and now we're playing Crimson Letters. So you can pick up your own copy of the Keeper rulebook from chaosium.com, uh, and you can also check out the virtual tabletop version, which is what we're using, on roll20.com. Uh, the ambience and the music that you're hearing is provided by Sirenscape, and the captions below each player are from a tool called Web Captioner. Uh, links to all of these can be found in the little description-y thing just below us. But let's go ahead and jump into the scenario. So, um, where it begins, we are in Arkham, and specifically we're around the Miskatonic University. Uh, there has been a um, death in the previous week. One of the professors that you'd met previously uh, on your Amidst the Ancient Trees scenario, who travelled with you, Professor Charles Leiter suffered a heart attack. It was unfortunate, but... Um, Nothing more came of it yet. Uh, the uh, three of you are enjoying a Sunday afternoon. Um, it's mid-ish October. Um, it's just going into autumn, so trees are beginning to drop leaves. And as each of you introduce your investigator, just see if you could describe them and kind of explain um, what they look like, what they're doing on a lazy Sunday afternoon. Um, ah, why don't you go ahead and go first? Hi, I'm Art. I am playing Vivian Langley, a slightly traumatized Shakespearean actor extraordinaire, um, who is, as we have established, lounging. He does not sit, he only lounges. So he is most likely, if it's a, is it a nice October day or is it cold? I mean, it's cold in the pleasant kind of way, you know, a little bit crisp outside, enough that you can wear a jacket. Brisk. He's you know what? I think I think Vivian is lounging near a window next to a fire, uh, just sort of like propped up, flicking through his complete works of Shakespeare, just having a nice lazy afternoon, possibly still in mild recovery from the last time he left this. And what building. does what does Vivian look like? Fabulous. <laughs> Uh, Vivian is dressed well, um, if the clothes are a little old, like, you know, slightly fraying hemlines, which are hidden by being tucked into, you know, pants and things like that. Um, very nice pair of like, dark brown slacks, nice old-ish leather shoes, nice sort of uh, shirt, um, quite clean. He has his, uh, silver pommeled cane just sort of like next to him um just like propped up against probably the wall where he leaves it most of the time i imagine he's actually either in like a library area of the university mm -hmm. um like just one of the sort of places where students and faculty come and go to read things and he's just sort of like parked himself there just you know enjoying the mild hubbub of the room as he just flicks through things and Vivian's an actor, right? Have you had have you found any work recently or are you still, you know, resting? I think um after the last outing, Vivian has been aggressively resting for about three months. So uh he has not had an opportunity to go out and find things, although he's probably spent some time poking his nose into the Arkham University like dramatic society to see A, if there is one, and B, if he can maybe get a teaching role. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something you could begin asking around. There is absolutely a dramatic society. They'd put on plays regularly. And I think it's the sort of one that would always be on the lookout for trained actors who could offer yeah. advice and you know inspiration to some of the students. Um, so that's a process that you're beginning. Um, and you, know, you may have just come from a meeting earlier today um so uh the next character that we meet is uh jackson hi i'm jackson i'm a character uh <laughs> i'm playing i'm playing professor stephen chase who is the youngest tenured professor at uh at miskatonic university teaching maths and a couple of the sciences 
Um, he's a he's, he's very very mild mannered. Uh, he doesn't want to trouble anyone. Doesn't want to get in the way. Just does what he's told. Uh, he's usually dressed in what all the professors seem to be wearing, which is tweed a tweed jacket and uh, impeccably slicked back hair. Very neat, tidy, polished shoes. And he doesn't goes around not taking too much space. Um, and right now, on this particular lazy, uh, brisk Sunday, October afternoon, he's sitting outside the uh, uncomfortable, sitting on the uncomfortable chairs outside the uh, Dean Fallon's office. That's right. His name? Yeah. Uh, Dean Fallon's office, waiting uh, to be led into a meeting, perhaps concerning the untimely demise of Professor Leiter. Yeah, so uh, Dean Bryce Fallon runs, like, the administrative section of the Miskatonic University. He's also a mathematics professor, one you probably studied on the, uh, while you were still here. Now, mm. uh, is Professor Chase nervous about meetings with, you know, superiors? Uh, yeah, especially given, given the circumstances of one of my colleagues dying unexpectedly, that, that, that signals a time of change and upheaval and... Uh, you know, all sorts of changes. <laughs> uh, so, yes, he's a bit nervous about the the uh, uncertain nature of the coming days. All right. Um, so you're waiting a little bit nervously. I've um, got a cup of coffee, which was slowly going cold in your hands. Um, but outside, somewhere else in, Miss, uh, in Arkham, rather, uh, let's meet Thomas. Uh, of, of course, uh, the, the Thomas Ouellette, the uh, dedicated student athlete and dedicated mathematics student, uh, has been a lot less dedicated after their last outing into the woods and into the horror of the mythos. I think that uh, Thomas's grandmother always had a saying for whenever something went wrong that her folksy wisdom didn't quite extend to when you have to bash the head in of a strange undead creature or the lake filled with some ancient demon after your colleagues and the best baseball player has been killed uh, by spikes um so thomas has been letting his uh grades slip not that there was much to to slip so he's just on the cusp of maybe possibly failing and he's been letting his training slip a little bit i think on a sunday he's sitting out at uh, a baseball game uh eating some nuts he's put on put on a few pounds uh leaning back and he's, he's loudly yelling advice at the, uh, at, at the, like, you know, 10-year-olds of Little League as he chomps down food. Um, do you still have uh, dreams of playing on the Miskatonic baseball team? I don't... Th I, I think that, uh, you know, it'd be nice or whatever, but I don't think he's, he's pursuing that with much energy now. I think he's sort of a lot more laissez-faire. He's doing putting in the bare minimum to keep his uh, swimming scholarship and his uh, position in the mathematics department. Um but the, the dreams of something grander uh, have been replaced with bad dreams of things in lakes. Mm. You also mean your uh, mathematics teacher um, is Professor Chase, who's kind of hopefully a little lenient, uh, given he also experienced some of the, uh, the recent terrors. Absolutely, um, yes. And also very, just for anyone who hasn't seen the show before, Stevie and I are cousins. You can tell by the familial resemblance. And the shared couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, let's begin with uh, with Professor Chase. So uh, you've waited for um, uh, you know ten minutes or so for the meeting. Uh, Dean Fallon is just finishing up with another colleague of yours, a, a man called uh, Professor Roach, who also works in the history department. Um, and as the door opens, uh, Professor Roach is escorted out. He's a weaselly looking little man with sort of slightly slicked back hair um and a folio under his arm stuffed with papers um he doesn't give you a second look he's more senior than you are here at the university and he kind of only socializes with his own uh equals from his perspective um and uh then he leaves and dean fallon who an older man, but he's, he's aging gracefully, um, extends a hand to, to shake yours and says, Stephen, uh, thank you for waiting. Um, why don't you uh, step inside? Oh, uh, yes, no, no trouble at all, D Dean. Thank you. Um, I 
hope it wasn't too long. Uh, he takes you into his small office where there's a comfortable couch on the other side. And rather than sitting behind a desk in sort of like a you know, position of you know, delivering the meeting, he, he spins a chair around and, and sits across from you uh, on the couches. He says, um, so Stephen, um, how have you, have you been recently? He'd be at least nominally aware of what went down recently, especially since it was the deaths of several students. Um, and he knows that you and some of your um, colleagues uh, were in and out of some therapy. Oh, uh, well, well, I, I can't complain, you, you know. Um, I, I, I made it made it back from Vermont, which is more than we can say for some. So um, carrying on and, and looking forward to, uh, to, to getting back into the swing of things, really. That's good. That's good. It's, um, I mean... You can throw yourself into your work, then I suppose that's a boon to it. Your um, one of your students, uh, Thomas. I, how is he? I, I notice he's missed a few classes, and I, I think he has a swim meet. He didn't show up to not too long ago. Uh, y yes. Well, we were all handling it in, in our own ways, and um. Well, he might not look on it from the outside, but I suspect uh, Thomas has a, a sensitive, uh, soft middle, perhaps, that he does not like to show very often. Um, so I, I'm supporting him as, as best I can, uh, you, you know, being somewhat lenient, uh, still within the, the bounds of, you know, com compassionate grounds as detailed in the staff policies and procedures. Um, but yes, I, I think he's going to make a, a full recovery in, in into course that's good i'm glad and uh, i'm sure you know the staff guidelines better than i do and um your your, your cousin they're well they're okay uh, uh, yes yes uh, no complaints um actually vivian was inquiring recently about um any uh, openings in the dramatic department you know a, a trained actor would be uh, quite a boon to the staff i imagine uh, but perhaps now is not the best time no, absolutely. Um, I can reach out to them privately and see if we can arrange something. I'm sure a, a, an actor of their caliber would be a, a merit to the university. Um, listen, uh, why I called you in here today is, um, Professor Leiter. Uh, you, he, um, was with you recently and you will have heard, of course, of his, his passing. There's been some, um some oddities surface around the event and we're under a bit of um scrutiny here and i was wondering if you could um assist me in looking into uh, okay. um what happened and some missing papers uh, you're familiar or sorry you remember the uh the hob house estate up in bennington I uh yeah gm questions we actually go back there and and finish the job no. or did we just bail <laughs> so uh after the events unfolded the three of you retreated back to arkham along with uh professor Leiter and, and amelia court they since went back and did it as part of the history department which you guys didn't need to continue on with it so it was resolved but it was not with you uh in the right. end uh, so, uh, Dean Fallon says, there were, um, as you remember, the, uh, the estate is loaning, um, its contents to us so that we can document them and understand the importance of some of the artifacts, but, uh, they are not explicitly ours. In fact, explicitly they are not ours and, um, a few valuable pieces have gone missing. There's also the, well, the nature of, um... Charles's death. Listen, it, I... It was a heart attack, wasn't it? It is. That's what the, um, the coroner has ruled it as, but it was, um, a touch more unnerving. We're still looking into it. If, if you'd like to take a look at the body, I'm, I'm sure that can be arranged, but the most important thing is we need to recover the missing documents. I need to understand what happened to them and and if they were stolen, if Professor Leiter was involved in anything, I, I also need this to be handled discreetly. The university could be um, severely punished if these go missing. They were uh, valuable and quite important to the family that inherited them. 
I think I understand, and uh, you think uh, I'm well suited to the task, and being uh, my involvement in the in Vermont. Vermont, and I mean, Stephen, you've proven yourself here at the university time and again, and I, I taught you a while ago. I know you have an eye for detail, and I wouldn't trust anyone else. Well, thank you. I, I certainly hope I won't disappoint. Um, you know, I, I happen to have a bit of a shared experience with uh, Vivian and, and, and Thomas, and, um, well, I can't help but to think that perhaps it would help them in their recovery and, and to, to, to put the events of the past in the past if, if they could assist me in, in tidying up uh, Professor Leiter's affairs. W would you object to that? No, no, not at all. You know, many hands, light work, and everything. If you think they'd be comfortable with it, I, I don't want to put anyone on. And you'll be compensated for your time, and I'm sure we can arrange a, a payment for any hours they log against the case. Um, no, that, that'd be fantastic. Listen, I I don't want to tell you how to, you know, go about your investigation, but um, just some, some cursory information, place to point you in. The office... Um, where he died. I, I, I made sure it was locked after the event while we thought that the papers might just be inside. Um, I can get you in there and you can have a look around. Uh, Professor Roach, who you just saw departing, is taking up the remnants of the Hobhouse estate and going to continue the work. He may have some insight into what happened. And uh, Amelia Court, uh, the young woman who was with you, um, she is an assistant to Professor Leiter, and she was actually the one that found the body. She may be worth talking to as well. Um, I also have keys to Professor Leiter's cottage, and he passes them over. Um, you're free to have a look around there as well. Just remember, um, the missing documents where possible, and uh, yeah, make sure you um, I'll keep the university's good name clean. I'll certainly do my best not not to disappoint. So, thank you, Dean. All right. Well, thank you, Stephen. And um, if you have any any questions, any issues, my door is open. All right. He uh, steps up, escorts you back out, and um, you are free to locate the others and and begin looking around. Uh, where do you want to go first? Um. I guess home. It would be good to scrape any actors off the couch before I. Uh, uh, you're muted. Uh, I... <laughs> but I think I think Vivian is in the library. Um, so I think you know. Oh, I think oh, you know right. where Excellent. they are. Fantastic. I have no memory of this. I wasn't muted. I was just very good at mouthing words. Oh, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> you're too polite. All right, let me track down uh, Vivian. All right, yeah. So you head the down library, to allegedly. the library as part of the Miskatonic campus um it's one of those really <laughs> old ones that's stockpiled books over ages and ages um there's anything you could possibly uh need to research could be found within uh and also there's an actor lounging on one of the couches i scrape an actor off the couch uh vivian uh, good good afternoon um Phoebe, uh, how much about your eek my friend what can i do for you yes Yes. Uh, well, it happens. I, I have a bit, a bit of a job. Um, you, you know, I, I know. I think you were looking into um, maybe maybe taking on some some teaching responsibilities here at the university. And uh, oh, you know, just something to pass the time. I mean, of I'm course, and, and pay the and pay the rent. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway, I might I might have a, a bit of a, a way in for you. Uh, uh, the dean has a, a bit of a job for me, and uh, I asked if it was okay to, to to rope you in as well, and he said it was fine. So it might be a good way to you know uh, get a, get in his good books. Um, does that sound all right? Color me intrigued. What's this uh, work? Well, you remember uh, Professor uh, uh, Leiter pa passed away a short while ago. Um, mm -hmm. The story was his heart gave out, you know, the, the stress from from Bennington and all that stuff. But, um, well, some papers went missing from his office, so we just have to track him down. That's that's really all there is to it. And uh, well, since we were since we were there with the events and, and whatnot, um, we, we might be in a good position to, to find them. 
So some some scribes went missing, and you want to go shopping for them? Probably. That's probably what I want to do. Yeah. Well, that sounds burner. I have nothing else on. Sure. Excellent. I, I might uh, grab Thomas as well. Uh, let's get the whole gang back together. I haven't seen him since. You know. Well, y y you know, uh, he's carrying on as best as he can, as, as, as well as all of us. Um, but the thing is, I, I think maybe helping put Professor Leiter's affairs to rest might just what be what he needs, what we all need, to uh, put the past in the past. I mean, either that or at least spending some time around that Dolly Pallone. He rather fancied her, I think. Amelia? Uh, he, he Thomas and, blind, a, and Amelia. He was ogling her quite a bit, yes. But but she's on staff. I don't think that matters, darling. Well, it it, it does, depending on the books you read. I can tell you that, and I can think of one book. Anyway, I, yeah, he, we should probably go find him and 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 pull him away from whatever he's doing. Sure. All right, so the two of you make your way out of the university library and uh, striding across the grounds, you have a few good ideas of where Thomas might be found. You previously spotted him in, you know, the park benches or he's probably not attending to his studies. And then the, well, there's the obvious one, uh, the baseball field. But there's only a little league game on today and it seems unlikely that he'd be there, but from the distance you can hear heckling. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think that's our really on me, Stevie. It's like I've never played before. <laughs> Most of them haven't. <laughs> Chicken, uh, they're 12. Uh, upon, upon seeing uh, my, my friends arrive, I'll, I'll dump the remainder of my bag of peanuts and stride down right in my, my, um, uh, my clothes and then head down and go, hey, it's, it's my two buddies. How, how are you both doing? Uh, very well, Th thank you, Thomas. I didn't realize you'd taken up a coaching position. That's uh, a very, very kind of you. It's it's so good to see you giving back to the community. I, I hope they're doing well under your tutelage. Oh, I, I wish. No, this one's a blowout. Uh, I, I, you see that kid over there? That one in the uh, the yellow shirt? Oh, that... they're all in yellow shirts. I think yeah, that's well, how I mean... your uniform works. <laughs> now you could call that a uniform. Anyway, it's a blowout. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, better luck uh, next next innings. Sure. I, you will have innings. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm pretty confident it does, but I don't think any of us are willing to make a risky call. <laughs> I, I will, yes. Baseball has innings. Oh, thank God. <laughs> In this universe. I've been to I've been to I've been to one ball of baseball game and it wasn't a little league game. So mm. there you go. <laughs> um, what are the two of you here for? Well, uh, we we thought we'd uh, uh, pull you away from this uh, a very important uh, uh, job if you got the time to spare. Um, the dean's asked me and uh, uh, well implicitly the, the two of you as well to to help us uh, track down some of Professor Leiter's missing documents. Uh, and I, 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 I just thought, you know, since we were all there in, in Bennington, we, we, we could uh, be in a good position to, to help figure out what happened to them. Uh, of course, if you're uncomfortable for any reason, then, uh, then, we, then we shouldn't. But I, I just thought, uh, you know, the three of us together again. No, you know, I uh, honestly, uh, watching Little League games is probably not a good use of my time. So this, this does sound... Preferable. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to say I'd love to get involved. I mean, Professor Lyder was a, was a, was a nice guy, and I'm sad. It wasn't a nice guy. I mean, there's every chance that the heart attack was caused when he did something half decent that wasn't driven by money for once and had a heart attack doing it. But look, uh, I'd be happy to have a look at any rate. You Plus, excellent. The chicken. You've got. You've got pots now i'm surprised well you know the we, we you, the the, uh, the professor was kind enough to pay for uh my, my private therapy i did a lot of self-reflection deep breathing and stuff you know they say there's an inner peace inside us all and i'm frankly a great fan of it <laughs> yes breathing exercises they teach you very early on in acting school it's very healthy it's oh of course thing. of course well I guess where do we start then? Straight to light. Have you, you're allowed. Have you been in the office? 
Well, no, we, we just came to collect you, but uh, uh, yeah, I suppose that's a, a first stop. Uh, I've got the keys already. If you're looking for missing documents, I, I reckon it's a certainty that Amelia, uh, Mrs. Court, would have them. She'd be able to find them in 10 seconds flat, I tell you. I think it would be a rather boner idea, uh, Chicken, if you went and had, uh, you know, a, a chat with the Dolly Miss Amelia. What do you think? I, I uh, sort of straighten up my clothes once again, uh, become conscious that my shirt doesn't quite fit as well as it used to. I, I, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I can go talk to uh, talk to Amelia. Sure. Or we could all go together. I think Stevie, you and I are better suited to looking at office information with meticulous detail. I mean, if what you told me the dean said is true. You have an eye for detail. I think that is best suited. You and I go over the uh, the details, and we'll let Thomas over here do the talking. He's very good at it, after all. Got a real gift the gab. That he does. All right. Uh, maybe it'd be better for a, a, a short one-on-one -on -one with Amelia. A short, short one-on-one. -on -one. And then why don't you come over to the office and we'll discuss what we found. I'll meet you there afterwards. You know, she, she's probably going to be uh, grieving in need of comforting. Uh, that my thoughts exactly, Chicken. You are going to be all right on your Todd, yes? Oh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'll catch, I'll catch you both at the the office in a little bit then. And, and just like Vivian will just sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> and then kind of like push Steve away. <laughs> Steve, you like. Come on, Stevie, dear. We're no longer required here. All right. Yes. Um, so uh, Vivian and Professor Chase both head up to the office block while Thomas um, heads across um, past the baseball field and towards um, some of the smaller cottages on the side of town. Uh, Tom, you would know that Amelia uh, rents out one of the, the homes here. You yourself are in, I presume, student accommodation. <laughs> of some mm. way um i mean yeah. you guys are passively friendly after the event and although you've never been to her place um you've probably walked past it uh so you know where it is um amelia lives in uh her own um cottage it's much flasher than your own which is shared with like you know six other dudes or something and you have a, a bed and a locker underneath it to yep. your name um there's a small courtyard out the front and as you walk up the steps um little two-story building bits of peanut from myself and you know <laughs> slicking my hair back and everything uh you can see that um quite a few of the the blinds have been drawn and uh there's a little bundle of like mail and newspapers jammed under the door which looks like it's accrued over the last couple of days um you knock yeah i'll pick up the bundle so i can hand it after knocking and i'll knock you knock and there's there's no immediate response um, you wait a couple minutes. Do you want to push the? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll knock again and I'll um uh yeah I'll, I'll sort of yell out um uh hello Amelia it's uh it it's Thomas Ouellette. I I uh I've got some mail for you here and um I, are you around? There's a, a beat this time and then you hear a um chain unlock and the door swings open. Um Amelia is a uh, she's a little older than yourself, um, being a postgraduate, and uh, her blonde hair has been uh, done up behind her back, uh, behind her her head. Sorry, uh, she's wearing a sort of an, an oversized um, jumper and doesn't look like she's slept particularly well in the last few days. She has a very fat white cat under her arm, um, and as she sees it's you, she says, "Oh, uh, Thomas, sorry, I um, I thought it might have been someone else." Um, uh, yeah, come come inside. Um, she lets you in the door, and you can see that the interior is like really quite nice. There's art pieces hung up along the walls, um, and she clearly has a, a a love of history reflected in her degree. Um, they sort of tell the the history of New England, um, different key events that I won't attempt to name. Um, and she she walks you into a small like sitting room, um, pulls her uh, legs up under herself, and and seats, patting the cat. Um, sorry, I, I, I haven't been around the university in a while. Um, uh, how can I, how can I help you? No, oh, no, that's okay, no problem. I'll just put your mail up over here. Um, oh, I, I, yeah. 
thought I'd come and, um, well, check in first. Uh, you, you're looking uh, tired. Um, your cat's lovely, though. What's its name? Oh, um, this is Scruffles. Scruffles. Oh, great. Uh, hi, Scruffles. Um, yeah. Well, look, um, I, I won't keep you too long. I know you, you're, uh, well, you, you've probably got a lot of resting to do, um, although... No, no. Listen, um, I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you came by. Um, I can, I, I've got tea or, or, or coffee. Yeah, that sounds lovely. And uh, I, I, I try to. I'm worried that she's not eating, so I'll try and suggest that we have biscuits or something, and then try and coax her into eating a biscuit. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Um, you sort of sit across from each other in in the small kitchen. Yeah. Um, and have you know, there's like polite conversation for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. You ask. You, she's basically. You get the feeling that she's basically been housebound since she mm. found the body. Uh, about four days ago. Yeah. Um, it's clearly shaken her a bit, but she's kind of trying to build up the momentum to get back into work. Um, yeah. She's also occasionally looking back at the windows and she says, you didn't um, see anybody outside when you came in, did you? See anybody? No. Yeah. Um, nothing like that. that you expecting someone? No, that kid, um, Flinders. You remember him? Anthony? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the little sure. weirdo's been looking through my windows. All, like what? All last week. I don't know what his problem is. Anyway, how I thought that might have been him. That's why I ignored you when you were at the door. I guess he's left oh. for now. Just if you see him out there when you leave, would you chase him off for me? Yeah, you want me to? I he, I think he lives in student accommodation. You want me to give him a talking to? Look, I at this point I just wanted to go away. Um, he hasn't. Okay. It's nothing too weird. I don't know what he wants. Yeah. Um. I'll that's all right. No, no, sure. Um, listen, on the topic of, uh, well, you know, the university, and I, I, I guess I, I got a, a, another motive in coming. Um, I was asked, uh, well, you know, uh, the, the, the professor was asked to um, come and um, have a look into some of the uh, aftermath the you know moving forward from the mathematics department's perspective um uh, going through the documents sorting out the records from the hobbs house stuff like that uh, what was so what's being looked into well specifically uh you know the, all the fine details that's that'll happen but there's one bit that the university asked us to help with uh there's a document that's gone missing uh, something to do with the hobbs house um, and um, I figured, well, you're you're the sharpest tack here. You, if anyone had a chance of uh, figuring it out, I just wanted to, well, you know, you haven't seen, you don't have any documents on hand in the house, no. do you, that you're taken out? Or? No, 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 absolutely not. Um, uh, Professor Leiter was very clear that things weren't to be taken um, out of it. It was only to be worked on um, in the office, although he did take a lot of his work home. Um, no, uh, I I haven't looked at it since um, since well uh, he 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 passed. Um, Professor Roach I think is now handling the um, the follow up. He came by to see if um, there was any you know insight I had to offer, but I I wasn't feeling up to it at the time, and um, you know I'm still not really quite ready uh, to dive back in. So um, listen, I would. Um, I'd, I'd like to rest for a bit, if that's I okay. I understand completely. Do you mind if I ask you one last question? Um, yeah, sure. Just an address. Can you give me um, prof uh, pr the uh, the professor's home address? Oh, might be worth sure. visiting his place. Yeah. Um, yeah, she gives it to you. There's a little ring of cottages. Um, it's actually probably quite close to Professor Chase's. It'd be a mirror to his. They have them set up to rent to uh, teachers. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll. Do you want me to bring you a sandwich, or you got enough food, or? Uh, no, no. I, I'm. I'm fine. Um. Thank you, though, Thomas. Sure. And I'll leave her in peace. Um. She walks you to the door, and uh, as you um step outside, you hear the uh, chain slide shut again. Um, a cursory look around. You don't see anyone lingering in bushes or anything, but. Yeah. I mean, can I can I do a quick um. Uh, can I just have a look for for, for footprints that have been around the windows? Just yeah, do a definitely. Quick track do I make a track roll? Yeah, let's do that real quick. See if I can spot something. That is a failure. Yeah, so uh, you could luck it if you want to, but otherwise, 
Look, I mean, there's definitely signs of people having mm. gone across and onto the garden. Uh, it looks like it's normally kept pretty neat, but there's a bit of mud that's been moved around. Definitely seems reasonable that someone could have been out there. But yeah. No further insight. I, I'm going to go rejoin the others for now. Okay. Um, you head back across uh, and make your way towards uh, the sort of history wing of the university. Um, meanwhile, Vivian and uh, Stephen, you've um, gone up inside towards the second level. Uh, you've been given a ring of keys um, that will let you into both here and to uh, Professor Leiter's cottage. Um, but as you get towards the door, you can hear um, movement inside. I, I, I didn't know, uh, maybe Professor Roach has the keys as well. Um, well, let's just, let's just go knock, shall we? Off to you, yeah. Unless you I'll... want me to do the knocking. No, I can, I can knock. I can All knock. Right. I knock. I knock. You knock, and, uh, the, uh, you hear, um, uh, shuffling as papers inside are, are moved about and then uh, slow footsteps towards the door and then it creaks open just enough um, for you to see uh, Professor Roach's head just look through suspiciously at you. Yes? Oh, uh, Professor, um, uh, does he know who I am? He should. You don't, you don't right. see much recognition in his eyes though. Very good. Uh, Professor Roach, uh, I, I'm finally seeing you here. Uh, I was just uh, coming to, to check in on uh, Professor Leiter's office. Um, uh, maybe maybe you got the same brief from the Dean, but uh, we're just looking for some missing documents. Uh, uh, you've already gotten started? The Dean was very clear. I'm uh, taking over the Hophouse Estate investigation, documentation, and analysis. Um, I don't have any need for student assistance. That was a crutch of Professor Leiter's. I work alone. And he oh, goes to close the oh. door. Oh, well, hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. There's a bit of misunderstanding. Uh, uh, it's Professor Stephen Chase from uh, Mathematics and Science. Um, sorry. I, I'm sure we've uh, maybe just in passing met, met once or twice. Um, you but, seem well, young well, I was... for a professor? Uh, yes, I, I, I get that a lot, actually. Um, thank you. Uh, but no, I, I just came out of the meeting with uh, the dean, uh, I think just after you, in fact. I, I might have seen you in, in the hall, maybe. I don't um, recall. Well, that, that's all right. It doesn't matter. The, the point is, um, the, the dean asked uh, uh, myself and, and Vivian here to uh, have a look in as well. So um, maybe if you could show us what you found, we could, we could get started. What exactly are you looking for? Because again, to be clear, the Hub House estate is under my jurisdiction now, and I'll be the one um, documenting and uh, going over the historical records. Well, that, that's fine. If you want to document, document away. But as I said, the Dean sent us to do much the same thing. So I guess we're at your disposal here. Uh, uh, let, let us know how we can help. Uh, uh, let's uh, get started, shall we? Um, do you want to can make I, can a... I tri I'm, I'm not sure if that's persuading or charming. I'm saying, yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Let's, let's, uh, I'll do what, uh, you know, let me help you. It's persuade, I think, right? I think it's persuade. I think persuade works. Go ahead and make a, right. a straight roll. 50-50. Ooh. Uh, you could try and push it. <laughs> uh, he doesn't seem uh, he doesn't seem to recognize. He, he's kind of locked down this area. You could always come back later when he's not here. You do have a key, and for what's worth, you are supposed to be allowed inside. You've been given pretty explicit instructions. Um, he's probably just stonewalling you because he likes the power trip and he doesn't want other people to look in on this. If you really push him on yep. it. Um, and make him make a call between disobeying the Dean, um, he might. Well, I, I don't mind tapping my luck down a little bit. Five points. I, Is that gonna... I don't mind stepping in. You want to have a go? Well, I think I'm just going to sort of like rest a hand on you, unless you want to push this. But otherwise, I think I'll Well, I think if you try, it is still pushing it, right? It's the same, the same you, task. You could tag in, yeah. I'm just like, put my hand on your shoulder and be like, Look, your music is kind of annoying me. We're sharpening some, some scribs, darling. And if you don't let this in, I am going to let the Dean know. I didn't follow um, a word of that. I'm uh, aware you're going to let us inside, darling, because we're all friends here. We just want to get the Dean work done, that's all. Oh yeah, this, is, this does feel like pushing. Uh, do you want to push it with a charm check? Yes, I do. But I think it's going to be hard. 
because uh, he is not a particularly um, likable or liking guy. All right. I am being a little obnoxious as well. <laughs> Just a tad. Ah, uh, food. Um, I I think he 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 just goes. If the dean has um words delivered to me, he can say them in person. Listen, I'll be gone soon. If you want to look around and you have your own key, you can let yourselves in then. But in the meantime, uh, good day. Uh, and he pushes the door closed. If there's a foot in the way, it can be stopped. But he is ending this as best he can. What about um, what about a cane? Yeah. The cane, the cane slides into place and the door stops abruptly. He looks down at it and he says, Remove your cane. Remove your eek and let us in. Listen, I, I don't... I can't have any further tampering. Something's already gone missing. And to That's be honest, I point. don't know either of you and I, I, I can't know that you can be trusted. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, Stevie, dear, can you, can you shake that ring of keys for me? Uh, uh, yes, I have nothing, nothing on hand. <laughs> Something's already been stolen. There's nothing to, to, to stop you having lifted that from the guards. I, I mean, you you have the air of a thief, sir. Oh, that's so kind. No one's ever said anything <laughs> quite that nice. No, I'm an actor, almost the same thing, really. We have some keys. The dean has asked us to look into the missing papers. You are currently stopping an investigation, which is, you know, generally speaking, if the lallies were involved, you'd go to prison. He sees that neither of you are willing to relent, uh, and he uh, flings the door open with uh, energy unbecoming of him. He then storms out and past you and says, fine, uh, continue your investigation, uh, disrupt what you will and ruin my hard work, but the, the Dean will be hearing about this and I'm, I'm going to uh, Bryce's office immediately and the two of you will surely be punished. That's uh, fine. If if you talk to him, we'll we, he'll get this all straightened out. Uh, feel free to come on back once uh, <laughs> once once you you've told him uh, what's going on. Uh, once he's told you, rather. And uh, looking forward to working with you, Professor. Youngsters, rabble! This university's going down the hole. Uh, he grabs uh, some of the papers that he was taking, um, jams something into his pocket, uh, and begins to walk out and past. Do uh, is there a chance of catching a glimpse? Yeah, definitely. Do you want to make a do you want to make a spot hidden check? Um, as he pushes past the two of you and makes for the stairs. Uh, I'd be so keen as to do the same. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Hell yeah! A lot of red today. All right. Uh, uh. neither of you see it. It was something fist sized. It went into just one of his trouser pockets. Um, but he rounds the corner and begins to head away towards the administrative can I, buildings. Can I knock into him in an attempt to push the roll? Do you want to push role? it? All right. Uh, this I will be you, to. like, a, uh, not aggressively, oh, so but... clumsy. <laughs> All right, go for it. Push the roll. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> uh, he, you basically play it off as just stumbling. <laughs> Actually, you tell me. How do you, how do you play it off? How do you see what's inside the pocket? Uh, I, I like, uh, go to open the door for him, I guess, and, uh, somehow, like, let it go, like, it's an auto close, it's a big, heavy, like, door that, that's in, inclined to close, and I, I let it go at, at, at the point where it kind of just smacks into him and knocks him over. He stumbles, actually just landing onto the ground and, and bruising his feet. The papers he's carrying are, are sprawled forwards. You can see their historical records. But um, his hand that was still in his pocket, he's unable to get it out to stop his fall. So when he lands, it kind of twists open and you can see in his hand a fistful of what look like casino chips, little green circles, um, each worth, you know, probably $25 a piece in, in value. And he awkwardly begins to scramble and put them on. He goes... <laughs> idiot watch where you're going I, I, i'm so sorry it's a heavy door uh, uh let me uh, help you get, gather these up uh taking a look at the help documents help me that get up first oh, oh, I'll, oh i'll offer a hand down to him and be like come on then unbelievable he reaches up to hand and you pull him up to his feet he dusts his his trousers off and he says the insult injury i i mean i i don't know what to say I am lost for words. You... I mean, sorry would do. Are you <laughs> implying I should apologize 
to you no. who have uh, impeded my investigation and now no, all but assaulted me. I was implying that we were apologizing to you for knocking you over and disturbing you. We're going to make sure that all of these piles of things stay as they are so that you don't have any extra work. We're just going to take a look around and try and work out why those documents were missing. We are trying to help. We're very sorry to have disturbed you. And I hope that when you come back you see that everything is as it should be and if anything has been moved in a way that you don't like do just come back and tell me and we'll make sure that everything is as you want oh you'll you'll hear from me that's certain um as you're talking to him Stephen, you have a moment to gather up the papers and, and and shuffle through them a little bit um you hand them back but not before noting that all of these are definitely related to the hob house estate um several are fairly old there's actual like some of the um books that they were actually looking into have been taken apart to be repaired in future and one of them is also an inventory of like everything that was found and it's huge um it was mm. actually also it was done by uh ron mitchell who was the lawyer that handled it they actually he was on site for it so he's signed off on that but it's also got um signatures from uh Leiter and amelia who were both present at the time it looks like those three were the only ones that were there um for the full That's assessment. one of the documents that uh, I uh, assess for, for later. Probably. Uh, you can see your little, like, uh, yellow post-it note where he needs to sign. What was um, the lawyer's name one more time, sorry? Uh, Ron Mitchell. I mean, Mitchell, I've uh, okay. put a little list of names in the uh, Discord call as well, just so it's something to refer to. Um, all right. Uh, Harland gathers up his things and storms away in a flurry of indignation and documentation. Um, the two of you... I don't know why he doesn't like us, Stevie. We're, we're the nicest people. Well, you, you know, so, some people you just can't please. Um, I, it just seems like he was uh, quite excited. You know, it did, technically it is his faculty, you know, history. The, the Hub House case was, was, was their, uh, their prerogative. So um, we are meddling a little bit. Uh, he, he has a point. It could be argued and from some point of view. Phoebe, darling, do not let anyone else's claim to a role take it away from you. What do you want to do first? So, um, uh, inside, I'll just describe the inside and then you guys can <laughs> make some decisions. Uh, so the inside is like a, 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 a shared office um, that um, Lyder commandeered so that he can work in it with Amelia. Um, there are a There is a table up against one side which has sort of like um, documents and um, reams of paper piled up alongside it. Uh, there is also a small fireplace up against the back wall um, and there is a mirror leaning up against one of the the, uh, the windows, one of those really tall ones, like a full-size thing, except it looks as though it's been like almost shattered and partially melted. Well, that's weird. Mm. There's, a, there's a mirror, there's a fireplace, and I missed the first one. And there's like a, you know, some desks filled with documents and just place where they work. There's also some chairs scattered about, smaller filing cabinets, what looks like possibly a, um, what would be a whiskey uh, shelf, except, of course, Prohibition, so it's probably just a, a smaller container for drinks and, and cutlery and things. They probably spend quite a bit of time here. Uh... Well, I, I'm a little concerned that Professor Roach there took most of the documents relevant. It's it's going to be a little hard to tell what exactly is missing, which is something I probably should have asked the dean <laughs> exactly what was the what dean was missing. probably has is relying on Roach to find some of that or work with Amelia. He knows that pieces are missing. He probably wouldn't have mm -hmm. that information. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. Well, I, I suppose we just start cataloging everything in here and seeing what we find. Do you remember the inventory of items that we started going through, you know, in the before times? From the house? Hmm. Uh, I don't I remember. I remember them being very nice statuettes, but... 
past that my my mind wanders the two of no. you yeah you'd remember like some of the bits and pieces but a lot of that memory has been you know uh overwritten by the events that followed <laughs> um there was tons of stuff in there um you know books um small trinkets and things all collected from new england history across you know from 1600 up could i i'm going to go and have a shop for some journals okay so you're, you're going to go if through I can find any of um, the professor's personal writings because if he found something interesting i imagine he would have made note of it yep Inventory definitely will know. so you can have a look through some of the desks um so while you're doing that uh professor chase yes that was my initial thought as well so if you're doing that i might take a look at this mirror to figure out why it's melted and shattered because that's a bit concerning I, I like that we've like kind of swapped places like i feel like vivian should be going to the mirror because he's just so much more vain <laughs> and steve should be like looking through the books but no. that's all right i'm gonna use my science on oh the yeah mirror. oh yeah uh, uh chemistry right to figure out what kind of thing is burnt it like what's melted. broken or something i can see that yeah that's yeah. a good idea what happened to it all right, go for it. Do you want to give me a chemistry check? And then Vivian, uh, library use is probably the most suitable for rifling through documents. Could I maybe, and this is because my library use is shocking, um, psychology to work out where he would have stashed something like private? It's a good thought. Um, I, I take a psychology role. It's probably not going to look for the actual journal, but you can get like a read for how he goes about his life here and how he uses the space. You roll well <laughs> enough, you might find something. Yep. All right. So psychology and chemistry. Um, and after we resolve these, Tom, you'll arrive pretty quickly. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. Success on both. Okay. Um, let's do the psychology first. So, uh, Vivian, you begin to look around the room, picking up pieces and kind of getting a feel for the, the, the life, um, that Lyder would have, um, uh, lived in this space. Uh, the chair is well worn down, the one that Amelia sits in, but his is in a uh, newer condition. It looks like he isn't in here as frequently as uh, Amelia is. And his desk, while more messy than Amelia's, who keeps hers nice and ordered, um, it doesn't have a wealth of papers. Um, there's a locked drawer at the bottom which you don't have a key for. Um, but it looks like he takes a fair bit of his work home or is just, you know, skirting and not really doing as much work as Amelia. Um, you also look around the room. The mirror seems a little out of place. It's nicer than the other stuff here. It doesn't appear to be uh, historical, but it sort of speaks to his vanity um, and probably just his, his self-importance that he would keep such a tall mirror here just for presenting himself correctly. Um, apart from that, little else of note, a lot of the papers that are strewn about are just from day-to-day -day life. You can find, like, schedules for his teaching, um, classes that he has coming up. It definitely appears as though he had no intention of suffering a heart attack. He's got, you know, exams coming up and things that he was preparing for. Um, but there's no full journal. If that were to exist, it'd probably be in his home. Yeah. And is that sort of the vibe I get is he's taken a lot of his work home and that's probably where we'd find more. Yeah, that's right. Um, Stephen, looking at the mirror, um, it, like I said, it's not a historical piece. It's a, it's a modern mirror, that being the, you know, 1920s. Um, it's tall. It's got a slightly ornate gilded frame, but it's the center of it, the, the mass of the piece that uh, demands attention. It appears that it has cracked in several points and sort of melted focally from them. Standing at your, how, how tall would you say Stephen is? Uh, he's not imposing. Mm. Uh, oh, let's have a look. What's my size at? Decidedly below average. Okay. Yeah. So you're a little yeah. short. Uh, it looks as though the focus of the, like, whatever caused this, you would presume intense heat um, could cause the, uh, the melting that would then lead to cracking, but there's no sign of actual burning around the outside. And the whole thing is about, you know, six feet up. Um, where it seems to have been directed. Uh, it seems like it began okay. there, sort of moved out, and then it cracked, shifting away. You also can't help oh. but shake the feeling that there's, like, a, a, a colour or, or something. The whole thing's, like, off, as if the... You know when something gets burnt and it sort of begins to change, like, um, turn, like, oil slick or something? Like, um, I think, like, copper and things do it. It looks as though there's 
the mirror is like fundamentally changed just a bit. It's not completely, you know, arcane based on the the heat of everything. It seems possible, but it's a it's a freak incident, and there's no tools in the area that would have caused it. Um, what about the carpet and the wall behind it? Any um, signs of burning or melting? Yeah, looking behind it, uh, there's no sign of melting on the um, the wall behind. Uh, looking at the carpet, you can trace a little bit of what looks like small black crumbs of something that may have melted or, or, or charred away, um, but they're further away from the mirror. They're sort of back towards the center of the room. Um, as you're looking down at these, uh, the door, which was sort of, you know, just, just, um, uh, leans closed, uh, swings as Thomas enters. Hey, you found anything? A very annoyed faculty member, um, and a mirror. How is, how's Amelia doing? Oh, she's doing, uh, she's doing okay, I, I think. Well you know, sad, but, uh, listen, she, she did say that, um, uh, Lida's, uh, took a bunch of the, the documents from the Hobbs house back to his house, uh, down next to yours, uh, Professor Chase. So I reckon we should go and have a look there. Could just be, you know, sitting under a bed or something. That is good news. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As Vivian said, Professor Roach from the Hidden History faculty was just here. Um, he seemed to think that, uh, he was, uh, in charge of looking into this stuff, um, which wasn't my understanding, but that's okay, just a miscommunication, I, I assume. Um, he did take some, most of the Hobhouse documents, as far as we can tell, so it's going to be a little tricky to know what's missing, but that, that, that's an excellent lead. Uh, uh, thank you, Thomas. Yeah, no, no hassle. Do we know exactly what it is we're looking for beyond missing documents? Well, no, the, the the dean probably couldn't say for sure what's missing, only that, that, that there was less that came back that should have, I suppose. Right. Well, I guess we'll, well, I'm certain we're going to find something at, uh, at Lyda's house. I reckon we head there. Also, um, she said that Flinders, you know, remember Flinders, the little oh, the, geek? The, the, that one. Yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being was, a... was that the was that the guy we rescued from the forest who mm -hmm. was really weird about getting a closer look at the walking dead bodies? Yep. Oh no. Yeah, said <laughs> said uh, said he was hanging outside her house, looking in the windows and stuff. She's got herself a stalker. That's something. Yeah, I guess so. I I don't know, um, Professor Chase. If you, if you need to have a word with him as a member of faculty like the university there's got to be something in the guidebook against that oh i'll find it if there is <laughs> i'll oh, there, find it there for sure is <laughs> uh yes yeah that's that's uh, a good idea um strictly speaking the the the, the staff colleges shouldn't really be accessible by students on the, most of the time so um uh, I, I should speak to him. Have I? I think we said in the in the in the downtime section in the last session. Have I been keeping a yeah. close eye on that kid? Because he been, was worrying me. Yeah, you've been kind of keeping up with him, um, and you've kind of gotten front row tickets to his slow um, descent into kind of obsession. He's been fueled by whatever events he witnessed, and I mean, you guys saw some properly arcane shit and a bunch of his not necessarily friends but um colleagues uh were killed as part of it and he kind of latched onto the idea that there's more to life than what we can perceive and initially he looked at it from you know possibly it's science or whatever but he's come to you a couple times because you were being friendly with him with tomes and things that he thinks he's discovered a lot of them like old like you know witch um like witch documents from um, uh, uh, the past, or you know, uh, esoteric uh, occult practices from 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 faraway lands. Um, he's gotten obsessed. He's taken you know trinkets. He, he started thinking that charms play into it, and he's talked with you about a lot of these because you have some experience with the mythos. You were able to dismiss most of it as just mundane. He did occasionally seem to trade something to a little closer towards something that may be actually um mythos related um and that was as part of your uh mythos improvement previously you kind of worked with a bit of that as well and and took it on board but yeah no he's gone over the deep end uh and it's kind of driving him he's also stopped going to classes 
super regularly um, and kind of just become obsessed with this. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a, a word with him. Um, he, he needs a little a little more help than perhaps uh, I've been offering. Um, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Well, okay. in the meantime, I've I found something quite interesting. Look at this. Look at this mirror over here. Um, it seems like, however, the documents went missing. Uh, someone's damaged this mirror somehow at, at some point, unless it was Lighter himself. But uh, I don't see how. You can see it's been melted in the middle here, um, and there's some charred bits around the carpet, but but no other damage. It seems like uh, a beam of light or a, or a, a, a flame, perhaps, is struck in the middle here, and then and then descended downwards. Did I get that right? No, it's more like the flame was focused at one point, about two thirds yeah. up, and concentrated enough to melt the glass and then crack uh, the mirror around it. Yeah, it's yeah, almost, that. It's almost like a head height, right? It's about where you'd be standing yeah. if you were looking in. With Thomas, saw, who's a I bit larger so. than Professor Chase, you step up to look at it, and your eyes are centered right on where that molten mark originates. Am I taller than lighter? Mm, nope, you'd be about the same. That's uh, that's funny, isn't it? Okay, well, um, look, I, I suppose uh, I supp I I think that we should head down to the uh, to the uh, cottages and, and have a look inside. Did um, uh, did 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 uh, Roach give you any trouble? You said he was acting a bit weird. Uh, not, not weird. I, I think he just uh, was a bit excitable by the whole uh, investigation. And, uh, well, he must have been a friend of Lighter's, so perhaps it's a bit personal for him. We have to be understanding at times like this. I see. He's being a right royal something. Um, they're, bo they're, they're both uh, colleagues in the mathematics department. Right? History. Uh, yes, history. Sorry, my mistake. But yes, they're both um, colleagues there. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, well, let's head down to the cottages then, I, I suppose. Okay. Um, right. So There's nothing else to find here, that is. Well, did we, did we have a good look at the journals yet? So there are no journals laid out. There are right. just, like, you know, class schedules and things, which you're able to see he intended to go on with day-to-day -day life. Um, Amelia's desk is kept neat and orderly. Um, it also contains some of her personal homework and, and, and work. She's, you know... Um, working under Lighter with the intent of becoming a professor in the future herself. Um, so she's pretty dedicated towards that. Uh, there was a locked cabinet in um, Lighter's long. drawer that you could try and have uh, a look through. Chicken. Hmm? I'm not the greatest with um, tools to get certain things open. You're not strong, aren't you? Um... Yeah, but you know, my my, I, I can open that drawer, but it won't close again. <laughs> yes, I don't think that's really an issue. We're trying to find missing things. If something's in a locked drawer, I'm sure the dean would understand that we were just doing our due diligence, and he didn't give us a key. Professor Chase, do I have your permission to damage property? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think uh, extraneous circumstances and all that. I'll show you extraneous circumstances and I'll tear the door, wrench it with all my strength. Uh, give me a strength check. Oh my. Go! Oh, ow! Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I, uh, I'm i so embarrassed I luck it to succeed. Okay, all right. Yeah, so uh, the first one, it, it, it clangs. You, you feel a twist in your arm, but then you slam it again uh, and the small lock on the inside just breaks open. Um, it bumps against the back and uh, inside a uh, pistol slides to the end and a bottle of liquor clatters over um but there's only two small things in here the rest of it has um actually as you look down you can see there's also a single uh poker chip the same ones that professor chase saw and it's kind of gotten wedged in the uh like the corner of it so that it doesn't immediately come fr uh, free it stays um sort of like cemented in place very uh, quickly, the drawer. Mm. Is it the right size for the desk? Uh, like, do you, are you thinking there might be a secret compartment or something behind Either it? Either something behind it or something underneath um, it. Like, looking at it, I'm like, does this look... It's a good idea. Like yeah. uh, can you give me a spot hidden check? I can. It's not going to do anything. Uh, take, take a bonus die. It's still not going to do anything. 
Yeah. Didn't, didn't it, for what's worth, it looks like it fits the space. There's probably not a secret compartment. It was already locked. Um, it looks like it's pretty empty, though, for just having these two things in it. Um, Can I give it a violent shake so if there's a false compartment at the bottom it'll come out sure make a spot hidden I'll, check I'll, I'll put the uh, i'll put the gun and the um oh sorry oh, i did. didn't yeah okay <laughs> uh, uh, i am i am going to take that bottle of liquor Thank okay you so much. uh so you just so what are you doing you're just taking the whole so desk i, I take the thing out, no, i take no 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 the desk i take the i take the gun out i take the liquor out i take the chip out and i shake the hell out of the drawer in case there's a false <laughs> bottom <laughs> All right. Yeah, you shake it back and forth with uh, vigor. Uh, no, there is not a false bottom. This appears to be the the, the whole drawer. Oh, okay. All right. We're all good. But and you're I'll confident in that now. I'll, I'll slot it back in. Um, as you as you slot it back in, what you notice, and this is with your your spot hidden success, is that the top drawer can be pulled back so that you, one would have been able to access this one without the key by just taking out the top drawer and going straight in. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, so, did the two of you, did you two tell me that uh, uh, the Roach had a bunch of poker chips? Roach had a bunch of poker chips. Oh my God. <laughs> I, th I think you you did mention he bugged off with some documents and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Poker chips, what, what, what was that about? Well, we all know that, um, you know, Lida was involved in some stuff. I mean, right here, this, and I'll pick up the bottle. This is illegal. You know? Is it now? I'm just going to take it and pocket it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame that people are just having illegal items as I'll pocket the gun. <laughs> 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 and I'll, I'll pick up the poker chip and be like, Stevie, do you want something? It's the draft system, we all get one. Well, if we're collecting evidence, I guess it'd be good to have one on hand to com compare with. And the poker chip <laughs> Look, um, hey. look, uh, you know, um, it seems that Bryce, sorry, not Bryce, uh, Roach had um, something to do with, you know, with some kind of information. So look, down at the cottages and we talked to Roach. I mean, we got a lot to do. Um, and we got to talk to Flinders too. What about a, what about a split up? Um, how about, I mean, we can all just go together, one to the other. Alternatively, Professor Chase, you could head to talk to Flinders, you know, try and have a word with him, talk things out. I can go talk to Roach. Sounds like you have already burnt that bridge. Mm. And um, uh, you, you uh, Vivian, you could go check uh, check the house, go to the cottage itself, take one of the keys, start having a look inside. I, I'm better talking than I am at looking so if there's someone to talk to over look that might be well sure I mean it's not a bad idea does does Anthony know Vivian at all or is I that mean, a stretch? you all shared a traumatizing experience everyone knows right. everyone a little bit you, you were all in the car on the way back I think Vivian well, look, relieved it, him of some magical uh, notes I he was trying to make I think I I took them off him and I said I was going to hold on to them for safekeeping. Yeah. It wasn't a you can't have them. It was just wait. No, for you all know you all know it. one another. I would say he's definitely closest with you, Professor Chase, because mm -hmm. you actively reached out to him. He would consider you like a you're his favorite teacher and blah blah blah. Vivian, he definitely knows though. Um, well, if, if anything, maybe maybe he'd be a little bit wary of. Uh, I've been keeping a close eye on him for most of summer and. Um, and and the and, and the fall so uh, maybe it's not such a bad idea if, if if you want to take a fresh angle vivian and if you need to go you know a little a little bad cop then then maybe that's what he needs to uh leave amelia alone and and i wouldn't want to spoil the the bonds that i have with him you know i think that would be best even. all right so i'll, I'll take a look at uh at uh, lighter's house then sure that that just leaves uh roach so i guess i mean Shall we? Shall Vivian and I do a quick pass? Visit Roach first, then go to a uh, go to Flinders. Then we'll meet you at the house. I. You made a good point, but Roach might not be super keen on seeing our eats again. So if you're comfortable handling him yourself. Oh, you, you got know. an imposing presence, Thomas. That I don't know that uh, either of us can quite match. Sure, I'll I'll go speak to him. Then I'll yeah, well, we'll we'll easy. We can do it. Perfect. 
All right, so uh, Thomas is going to go track down Harlan Roach. Vivian's going to have a yarn to uh, Anthony Flinders and Professor Chase is going to check out Lyda's cottage and then you'll all meet at the cottage after. All right, fantastic. Um, so why don't we take a short break um, now and then we'll come back for the, the second half of a little bit of digging, see what's going on. So Excellent. Thanks for hanging out. We'll take a 10-minute break and we will see you soon. A ciao. Hello, and welcome back. And that's really funny. You can see the countdown that I give as we come in, in the screen capture or whatever. So you get uh, just a countdown. All right, uh, so um, we are jumping right back into Crimson Letters where the three investigators all split up and hurtle off in different directions. Uh, so Thomas, you're gonna be heading back to the administrative building because the others could have told you that um, Professor Roach threatened to go and talk to uh, the Dean. So that's your most likely um, where you'll find him. Uh, Vivian, you're heading to student accommodation and uh, Professor Chase, you're going back to, you know, pretty close to your own home and looking for uh, uh, Professor Lyda's cottage. And I'll be wheeling around to rejoin Vivian at student accommodation right after speaking with uh, okay. Roach or such is the plan. Yeah, sounds good. And then the two of you will go and meet up at the cottage and so on and so forth. All right, no, that all sounds good. Well, in that case then, Tom, let's do you first because depending on how quickly you are, you might meet up with the others. Uh, so you head out of the building and you actually probably saw Professor Roach hurdle past you when you first entered. Um, and then you make your way up towards the administrative section. Um, the Dean does have his own secretary. And uh, as uh, you're speaking to her, you can hear muffled behind uh, the closed door uh, expletives as uh, Professor Roach um, uh, yells at the Dean uh, for having sort of, you know, handed off his uh, investigation and his project to a bunch of students. Um, the secretary apologizes and says, um, the Dean will probably be available in just a moment. It's pretty important. I reckon I should go in and I'll uh, move to just step past uh, it. She go uh, <laughs> no, no, sorry. Uh, that's a, a, a private... Uh, conversation. I'm afraid I can't let you in just now. Uh, do you want to make a, can a I, roll? Can I have just side sidestepped and gone right in, sort of t taken advantage of, of the surprise? Or uh, no? yeah, I mean, if you if you if you if you want some, she's definitely on your tail as you go in. Then uh, you dart around her, you open the door, and she's coming through, apologizing as you do. Um, uh, she comes in, she says, oh, "I'm so sorry." He just barged through. Uh, the dean. Um, uh, looks uh, surprised and unimpressed at both Harland and yourself and uh, Roach wheels around and says uh, are you another one of uh, Professor Chase's lackeys? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll smile at the secretary and say, I'll just be a second and, and um, turn back and say uh, uh, yeah I am uh, so we've got important news about the case uh, for you uh, Dean uh, uh, so Dean puts up his hands just uh, uh, Thomas in future you cannot just barge in here you need to knock and wait I was having a discussion with a professor well it was that or go to the police about the illegal liquor and guns and gambling proceeds he steps to the side the secretary goes like closes the door <laughs> it closes the door but then you don't hear footsteps walking away which is strange yeah. um uh Bryce sort of goes right um uh, Tom, why don't you come inside? Uh, Professor Roach wheels around and goes, liquor and, and, and guns. Well, uh, anything else? Well, let's uh, go into detail about it. Um, there's a, it was a secret drawer locked, hidden away inside. Uh, it was just a locked uh, drawer. Yeah, locked drawer light in, hidden inside Lighter's office. Had a gun in it, had liquor in it, and it had a bunch of gambling chips in it. If you want to know where most of them are, they're in his pockets right now. <laughs> and I'll point. <laughs> um, goes ask back. him to empty them out. I, I, the, 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 uh, what exactly are you, are you accusing me of, young man? Uh, Dean, this student comes in here and levels uh, accusations without base. Uh, you can surely prove me wrong you're by not going to. Your I don't need to prove myself to you, uh, young man. Um, yeah, I'm a professor to here. Uh, de the Dean looks between the two of you and says, uh, uh, liquor and a gun and gambling chips, the proceeds of illegal gambling, in his pocket right now. Harland, did you take anything that you weren't supposed to from the office? And Roach backs up and goes, and, and I, I didn't, and if I did, I had cause to, because it was 
Um, it, it was all relevant. This is kind of a... The Dean would have to f straight up call the professor a liar to get him on this. And it's kind of a battle of... of not wits, certainly, but more just, you know, proving it. Uh, could you give me a persuade test, Tom? Uh, I think. Could I, could I argue or intimidate? intimidate? Like, yeah. Warchance had talk, you talked about the police and talked about all of that. I think intimidate definitely works. Hard success. Oh. <laughs> Dean goes, Harland, if you've taken anything, it could be relevant to an ongoing investigation. If this gets the university in trouble, you know what that could mean. And Harland... I, I only took them so that these sneaks didn't take anything. I was bringing them to you, uh, Dean. And he reaches a hand into his pocket and pulls out, like, three chips and goes, ah, as, uh, as uh, requested as part of my investigation, these were um, found amongst other illegal things in Professor Leiter's office. I, uh, I wonder... Uh, where the other things went. And uh, he looks over at you, Thomas, and you took the firearm, right? Yeah. How's it how's it being carried? It's it's um it's tucked away in my um in my coat pocket. He doesn't see it no. immediately, but he says, I'm sure if you uh uh return to the office we'll find everything uh, where it should be. You're crazy? Leave it there? No, I'm not a fool, not like you, Professor. I brought the firearm here to provide with the Dean. The liquor, well, I mean, as embarrassing as it is, and most staff members have a bottle up in their, in their desk, so I thought that could be left. The Dean... Thomas, you need to... Uh, I understand you're um, aggravated, but you need to be courteous when talking to Professor Roach. For good or ill, he's a... No, no he would not say that, so that's me. <laughs> he yeah. is a, a, a teacher here, and you need to... Okay. to to speak to him I with understand. some respect. I apologize, Professor. I will leave you to continue chastising the dean, and I will walk out. <laughs> uh, he goes, "Add the gun." Uh, I turn, turn. I'll turn around and say, "Oh yeah, you wanted. Uh, should I take it directly to the police, sir, Dean?" No, no, no. There's no need to in, uh, go to the police. There's you probably had a license for it. Why don't you either hold on to it yourself, Thomas, until. Uh, we find out more or you can leave it with me i don't think the police um, need to be involved um i uh, say oh and yeah okay I'll, I'll nod and say and for the record uh you don't know anything about these chips uh yourself do you um uh professor fallon no uh, that's a dean professor indeed. professor roach Roach is no i mean a lighter famously a uh, uh, gambler and always uh, interested in money and surely this was just his latest loss or Victory temporarily. How did you know to look in a locked drawer for him? I was conducting a thorough uh, investigation. I um, was. I. Most of the uh, staff desks have the same drawer. You can get into all of them the same way. It's a okay. common security flaw in the university. All right. Well. I'll leave you to continue your conversation. Thank no. you. Head out. You can excuse yourself. The excuse says, me. Thank you, Thomas. If you have anything else, please just knock next time or wait outside. Certainly. No, head out. You head outside and uh, the conversation... I'll rejoin at the student union. Yeah. The conversation continues then. Um, does Thomas... I'm wondering, is, is this pretty in character for Thomas with how he treats like professors and things? I think it or is does, now. Is, yeah. I think previously. Also, I don't think he respects. Um, I, mean, I, I think like yeah. I, I, th I think that particularly Roach that stealing a bunch of gambling yeah, stuff he is, is not a good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thomas is pretty honest. You know, returning the the money from the bounty last time and stuff like that. So I think he doesn't think much of the guy. Also, he like handed over three and he clearly had more. Yeah, he kept more well. in his pocket for sure. Yeah. 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 No. One hundred percent. All right. Uh, you head over towards student accommodation uh, as Vivian. Um, you are having a look around. So you're going through, you get to these like um, college dorm style buildings, large, just sort of blocky things with room after room after room. And inside each of them that you look, you can see students lounging around, talking with one another. There's a lot of like multiple beds in single rooms and you're sort of looking to try and find Anthony. Uh, what's your strategy? Are you talking to people? Or are you just looking up a name in a registry? 
No, I'm I'm talking to people. It's what Vivian does best. He makes friends. So he's wandering around, uh, probably like, you know, finds a, a group of students who seem to be like chattier, like not studying and will just kind of um, slide into the conversation and be like, you know, good evening or good afternoon or whatever. Um, and uh, uh, good I'm, afternoon. Hi. Uh, I am uh, I'm trying to find Anthony. You haven't seen him around, have you? Anthony, uh, last Linders. name? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I think he, uh, I, th I think he's in one of the share rooms up the far side. Is he in trouble? Oh, Lord, no. No, no, nothing like that. No. Actually, I'm, uh, I I'm, I'm one of the, uh, the, the newer, I'm not going to say faculty, but newer people around and, um, kind of scouting for the dramatic society. You know, anyone with a flair for the macabre always, uh, Well, he's got a flair, all right, and... Macabre, indeed. I don't know that he's much of an actor, but yeah, Sorry, I mean. Your name was dear. Brian. <laughs> Brian, you've been very helpful. Thank you so much. Well, best of luck. But hey, before you get to it, that the, the kid's weird. All right, and don't let him touch you. He's got sticky fingers. Oh, don't worry. I've had uh, plenty of experience with weird people who can't keep them their fingers to themselves. It's called acting. <laughs> Well, no, I'm just... clearly you know more about acting than I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you step away from the card game and go to find Anthony. Um, you find uh, one of the back rooms uh, has a pair of uh, beds pushed into it. One of them is inhabited by another student, more sort of mundane things. But Anthony's is like this little nest of um, bedclothes, which clearly haven't been washed in quite some time. There's a small chest at the base, which has had the like a uh, university provided lock removed and it's been replaced with something like huge and oversized, but probably not actually any more secure. It just looks like he's got a kind of conspiracy. Like they have the keys. I can't keep my stuff here. Um, as you go over and he's, he's not here, it's just his room and the, the other student isn't here currently. Um, actually, someone will probably come by and say that Anthony is not here too often. He's probably out and about. He'll be back tonight though, um, when he sleeps. Uh, otherwise, I'll feel free to look around. I ain't gonna stop you. Um, no one really wants to get in your way. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna shop around. Sure. Um, you I can give me, so, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, this, mm, I would like to get a read on the, on him, on this whole thing, like, get a feel for just exactly the kind of mind I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. The person I'm about to enter a scene with, that kind of thing. You know? Sure. Uh, so psychology definitely applies. If you have any occult skill as well, that would definitely help. Oh no. Nope. No. Ah, psychology uh, not is. Not outside of, you know, the weird sisters or, you know, things like that. Nothing nothing outside of the, the Shakespearean theatrical occult. I know how ghosts are made, but other than that. Oh, I do not have... Oof, extreme success. Well done. All right. Um, looking around this little, like, rat nest that he's built for himself, uh, Anthony is clearly deep in the sort of, like, grasps of some sort of mix of obsession, depression, and he's probably suffering from some, like, post-trauma from, from the event. He's clearly not in a healthy place. And rather than seeking help, like you and, and and Thomas did, and actually reaching out, he's kind of just spiraled into this occult and he's grabbed at it. You can see under his bed, he has this little collection of, of what look like charms he's made that look like he probably just pulled them out of like a dead pigeon or something and, and, and cleaned them up and then scratched some things into them. Uh, there's notes scrawled in like a, a small journal which is just under his his uh, bed and towards the back covered in sort of dust and things and it's just like repeated phrases things that he remembers from uh bennington when they were in vermont um and ways he's trying to make sense of what happened he seems to clearly think that there's some sort of higher power uh he seems to specifically think it's satan or some sort of demon that is particularly calling out to him and he seems to be trying to understand and possibly even answer commands this is not a healthy mind. Ooh. Um, Thomas wasn't too long. Uh, uh, so, 
Sorry, can I can I have actually waited outside for a while? I want to try and catch Roach before before when he leaves. Sure. I'm sorry, if all that right. No, no, things. that's all good. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hang back. Um, Vivian, if you wait here, Anthony is sure to come by eventually. Otherwise, you could try and break through the lock on the 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 chest, or you can head off. I, no, I I I'm not going to tamper with someone else's things. Vivian is um, Vivian has some scruples various times um i think he's going to have like a look at anything that is accessible um see if there's sort of anything to be gleaned about like anything more than that essentially but if that's all i get then that's pretty much what i spend that's, my time doing i think work. i think that about covers it if there's anything specific you'd want to know i, I can try and answer but that gives you the biggest Mm. sort of feel for it he's got some random crap gathered i mean like he's got a what looks like a sacrificial dagger underneath the bed it's clear like a, you, you'd recognize a prop weapon it looks like he's taken mm. something and kind of like sharpened it a bit but not done a very good job of it and you can see grooves dug into the wood where he's probably like just he's just messing around with a knife he's just a slightly odd kid i mean as someone who carries around weaponry it's uh not entirely un unexpected I might, I might just wait uh, there until he comes back. Sort of just like casually, like just you know, dropping by for a chat. Kind of thing. Sorry, and you're absolutely right. There is something more that I should give you. Uh, he has clearly been stalking Amelia and Professor mm -hmm. Leiter. He seems to right. be obsessed with something that they were looking into, and something that he believes is relevant to his dark god. Can I? Is there any indication of what that is specifically? It just seems to be. He he thinks that they have found something powerful and arcane, and he's he needs to speak to them, but no one will listen to him. And maybe if he can just find them, if he can talk to them privately, or or if he can look through their things, then he'll know, and then he'll be able to understand it. That is useful to know because that gives me an angle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so you're going to hang out there. Uh, let's let's throw it back to Tom. Uh, so you linger outside the faculty building. A couple of other students come and go. Uh, one of them's your swim coach. Yep. Comes up and goes, "Hey, uh, 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 hey, Tom. Oh. Hey, uh, uh, Harry. Um, I uh, listen. I I, I just uh, tweak my back again. Yeah, I mean, you know, really uh, been missing you in the chlorine, dude. Oh yeah, no. I'll uh, I, I'm gonna be. I'll be. I'll be back for training Wednesday, and and don't worry. I'm 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 I've I've uh, been, you know. I'm 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 ready to go. All right. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to see you're well. And I mean, we we, we miss you, man. So we'll have Thank you back you. soon. Yeah. Feel good. Feel better. Yep. Uh, see ya. He heads inside. Um, and, go squids. <laughs> yeah, go squids. Uh, <laughs> and uh, immediately the door um, circles out and uh, Harlan Roach exits. Uh, he doesn't notice you immediately, um, takes in a short breath of air, and then takes off striding towards the cottages where the, where the faculty. And, can I try and catch him? Yeah, done. He's, he's very slow. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, Mr. Roach. Ah! You again. What? So quick discussion you and I need to have. Um, you know as well as I do, you've got more of those chips. We can forget all about that though, if you tell me where you knew they're from. And uh, you know, we just need information here. I don't care what you've got going on. I just want to care what was up with Lyda. What are you, some kind of a scam artist, some kind of a shakedown man? What's your angle here? Uh, my angle is that if we do go to the police about this, then you are on record in front of the dean lying about how many of those things you got. Now you're incriminated. Now proper incriminated. So why don't you just tell me? There's nothing. I... Look, the, 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 the chips, I suspected he had something inside the drawers. I mean, Lighter's a... He's always been a... a deviant. I mean, he's a, a, a womanizer and a, and, a, and a gambler, an alcoholic. Name it, he's done it. Um, I suspected there was something, and I, 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 I took them for themselves. Listen, he's... I don't know what more to offer you. I... He was in debt. Heavily. I can tell that from a glance. I mean, look at how he lived. I, oh. When he passed, I mean, they, they found him with a shoebox full of money. I suspect he was moving to leave town or, or get the hell out of here. I mean... Most likely, some of his, you know, the repercussions of his actions were coming for him. Okay, well, that's that's good to know. Um, 
thank you, Professor. And um, you, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know nothing about any more chips. No, no, I don't think you do. And uh, whatever you thought you may have seen, I'm sure you were mistaken. I, I, all the time, I, I astigmatic, you know. Mm, well, right. Have a good day. And he uh, heads off towards the cottages. Um, do you still want to go to catch up with uh, Vivian first? Yep. 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 All right. Um, the two of you pass. So they're not waiting for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so you'll head over there, which gives um, Stephen a bit of time to have a look around. So you can go past your own home. It's in the same area. So if you ever need to drop anything off or pick something up, it's just nearby. But as you get towards uh, Professor Leiter's cottage, there is a car idling out the front of it. And behind the steering wheel, there is possibly one of the biggest dudes you've ever seen. Everything a part of him is like square. He's got um, ears that stick out under like a little bowler hat perched over and he's looking over the steering wheel um, and standing at the uh, at Lighter's front door, the car door is still open. He clearly just stepped out, is another gentleman, similarly attired with the hat and sort of like a, um, a more casual suit. Um, he's slamming on the door again and he's going, Chuck, we know you're in there. Come on, answer us. This is only going to get more difficult the more you made us wait. He slams it again. Uh, I'm going to very meekly and quietly step up behind them. Not sneaking, but not drawing attention to myself. Are you going to the guy who's parked in the, in the car out the front or to the, uh, the gentleman uh, the, slamming on the, the door? The guy slamming on the door. All right. Uh, he, he, he hears you coming as he slams and he turns around to you and he goes, Hey, uh, guy, come here. And he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a, a photograph and he holds up. And he says, do you know this, this man? And it's a picture of Charles Leiter. Uh, uh, uh yes, yes. Uh, he's a colleague of mine at the university. Very good. Hey, um, listen, uh, he pulls out a, like a little, uh, wad of bills and he begins to pull out ones. He says, look, if you could point me in the direction where he is, I'd, I'd be much obliged. And he hands it out towards you. Oh, uh, well, I, 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 I'd very much like to help, um, but I don't think I'd earn that tip. Uh, uh, Professor Leiter is uh, he's no longer with us, I'm afraid. He's dead. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he passed away um, some uh -huh. days ago. Yeah, okay. Well, I've heard that before. Listen, did he tell you to say that, or is that public knowledge? No, no, you can ask anyone around here. Uh, a heart attack, uh, the stress just got to him, it seems. Uh-huh, yeah, all right. Listen, uh, Oaks, and he calls to the other guy who's in the door. He says, come on, let's have a look. If he's dead, then no harm in having a look around his place. The bigger dude gets out of the car and reaches under and gets like a, a, a Jenny bar, a little crowbar, and begins to walk up towards the door. Oh uh, well, I I can I could help you with that, uh, Professor Chase. Uh, I, I I happen to have um, a, a way in to his home, but uh, can I can I ask uh, what, what business you have with with the late professor? I I, I don't quite uh, understand what what's um, what's going on here. Oh well, uh, Chuck, your friend uh, owes me and my people a great deal of money, so uh, we're gonna oh, get my. it, or we're gonna find him, and then we're gonna get it. Well, um, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd really like to help you with that. I, I, I'm helping out with settling his affairs. Um, c c maybe I could get some details for you and, and talk to the uh, legal department and make sure that w once his estate is all settled, we, we can get that debt cleared away. I, I, I'd really like to help you out here. Listen, if, if, if I know Chucky, which I, I think I do, he's got something squirreled away up there and something for a rainy day. If he's really dead, it'll still be there. I can take it, and then we're settled. But if he's just bailed out of town and told everyone that he's dead, then uh, it won't be there, and we can, um, well, we'll deal with that when it comes. Look, I, I, I really have to tell you, he is uh, well and truly passed away. Um, I, I'm actually gonna go down to, to see the body later today. Um, oh, well, th this... why don't we come with you? You can show us the body, show he's really dead, and then, uh, we can look elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, if, if that would help. Um, uh, uh, should we say three o'clock? Uh, Let's say now. Oh, well, I was gonna... Um, yeah, it's just that, I mean, we're busy, you're busy. Let's go now. 
and the bigger dude puts like a hand on your shoulder and begins walking <laughs> you towards the car. <laughs> Come on, guy. Well, that that'd be that'd, just, be that'd be fine. He like pushes your head so you get under the thing and into the back seat. Uh, these dudes are like way bigger than you are, and it would be a yeah. you'd have to like sprint to try and bail on them. Uh, I'm not much of a runner. Oh yeah, well I can I can move that around. I I didn't have yeah. anything you know Good. No, really that, penned in. That makes sense. I was just it was just pencils one of those you know, cars that's, that's where there's, fine. there's no back seat so you have to get in past the seat uh sorry there's no um back door so you have to get in past the seat and then when uh the 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 smaller one shaughnessy uh gets in he slides the seat way back like into your knees and you're bunched up the big dude slides into the car uh and the engine which was still idling begins to roll away the shaughnessy puts an arm back and, and leans back to talk to you a little bit more and says so uh what do you do here Oh, uh, I'm a professor of uh, mathematics and uh, chemistry, and uh, I happen to dabble in a little bit of uh, physics and biology as well, uh, just for the, just for the quiet days, you know. Thrilling stuff. So, it's uh, does it pay well? Oh, uh, not yet, but you know that that's that tends to be how uh, the university life works. You, you kind of work your way up the uh, the hierarchy, so to speak, and. Uh, yeah, the longer you stick around, the more responsibilities you accrue. Well, uh, it can be quite lucrative uh, in some universities, yeah, well, I, I'm told. It, I mean, it certainly must be. The kind of money that uh, your friend was throwing around's got to be rolling in it, huh? Well, well not to my knowledge. Uh, you, you know, you still in, in quite the, the, the modest... Uh... See, you didn't say. How, how, do you, how, how did you know a Professor Leiter anyway? He borrowed money from some people I work for. A lot of money. Oh. Like a lot, a lot? $11,000 is the most recent debt. Oh, my. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize. Um, eh. Was it for some kind of investment, some uh, business venture? Do, do you know exactly what he was using it for? No, well, he was playing on a table made of green felt. He was a gambler. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that... Uh, well, I wish I could say I was surprised, but... Um, well, I'm I'm real I'm real sorry that uh, he's he's not here to see you. Um, it's all right. We'll see him well, soon. Yeah, I guess. So. Where are we going? Is it, is it a city morgue or is there like uh, a, a? Is he being kept on the university? <laughs> uh, he is being kept at the university. Uh, the dean could yeah. have told you that, but you're right. Actually, they will need directions from you because they don't know where it yeah, is. Yeah, of course. So do you say. point them to the right place? Uh, yes. All right. Uh. <laughs> um, you drive along, and as, you, as you're as you heading towards the morgue, uh, Thomas and Vivian, who are waiting out the front of the student accommodation, <laughs> you can see this car coming past. And at first, you look at it because you go, oh, hey, car, I'll look at it for whatever reason. <laughs> in the back, you can see Stephen. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I think Stephen's been adult mapped. <laughs> I mean, those are some butch homies. I'm a little concerned. They... Do they look like the lilies to you? I don't. No, no, they don't. I, I think if lily means cup. Um, listen, they head deeper into the university. I bet they're heading towards uh, to, to, towards the um, the where where Light, Lighter's body is being kept. Uh, we if we head across the green, we should be able to get there not too long after they arrive. That's fine, but we rather ought to deal with the whole Amelia stalker thing, no? Well, I mean. Uh, look, I'm torn. I, I, I. You go, dear. I'll deal with Anthony. Okay. I'll meet up with you there. I was planning on having a chat to him anyway. You go. I'm fine here. Okay. Okay. You sure? Uh, all right. Sure. Sure. Go and I... make sure Stevie is all right. Chicken. Okay. Yeah. Those are those are some. What what did you call them? Big. Anyway. I, I I'll run off. L all right. Uh, sharpers. Potentially Lily sharpers. Sharpers. Okay. Don't know what that means. So, uh, Vivian, you're going to stay planted, and Tom, you're going to take out in a sprint across the green. I'm, I'm, this is, but this is, I'm Ferris Bueller's day off. <laughs> <laughs> Leaping like over people and circling through things. All right, that's great. Um, actually, can you give me, can you give me a uh, Constitution roll? And this is going to, we'll basically just run it as like a uh, as a micro chase. <laughs> oh, I needed, I needed to get back in the pool. Uh, so you take no. out a, 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 a sprint, and yeah, you quickly find that uh, the days of uh, your your days off from exercise have begun to to catch up. Uh, you have to circle through uh, a crowd of students, and you're only just you're you're still not going to make it as you see the car pull up in the distance, and it does look like they are at the morgue. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll... 
get there as quick as I can, understanding that I will be late. No worries. Uh, Professor Chase, do you say anything further on the car ride over or attempt to stall them in any way or just kind of along for the ride? I'm going along with it. I'm cooperating. I'm cooperating here. No, uh, no reason <laughs> no to, to be worried. Um, as the car pulls up out and in front of the morgue, um, the uh, the two uh, men step out and uh, one of them lowers the seat so that you can uh, join them. And then uh, Shaughnessy says, all right, Oaks, uh, you stay with the car here and make sure no one just comes running out, huh? And uh, what was your name again, guy? Oh, uh, Professor uh, Stephen Chase. Uh. Stephen, all right. Well, uh, you walk us in and let's see the body. Now, Stephen, let's not make this any more complicated than it needs to be. Why don't you say that I'm an, uh, a brother or something and that's why I'm still here and I'm helping you look out for the guy, yeah? All right. That, that, that would be, yeah. That sounds good then. All right, well, lead the way, Stephen. And you head the way. inside. Um, you go in through the doors, and on the interior, there's like a whole medical wing for the the, the school, um, where people can can study, and then also if they need first aid or anything. Uh, you head through it, and you know that there's a section towards the back where a morgue um, uh, allows any people that have that have passed on the campus to be stored uh, temporarily. Um, you've never actually been in there, um, and out the uh, front of it, there is a man who you've probably met previously called Dr. John uh, Wheatcroft. He's um, one of the physicians here, and he um, actually previously worked as a coroner up in Boston, so presumably is the one that's going to be in charge of this. Uh, he sees you coming. He's eating like a sandwich and seated at the back. I'm, Professor Chase. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dr. Wheatcroft. Uh, it, it's good to see you. Uh-huh. And, uh, who's your friend? Uh, Shaughnessy steps past you and offers a hand to the man and says, Shaughnessy, I'm an, uh, I'm a Stephen's brother from out of town. He shakes it and I go, I didn't know you had a brother. Well, uh, more of a, a distant relative, you know. Uh, uh, Vivian showed up in much the same way a short while ago. That's, um... I seem to have a reputation in the family for um, pr partaking in drifters, but uh, you know, it's uh, that's how it goes. Uh, happy to be of service. Didn't know brothers could be distant. Well, well uh, uh, you know, uh, brother in the sense of uh, brother of uh, cousin. I don't, I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, we, we were uh, we were just uh, coming down. You know, the dean uh, w was hoping uh, that you could let us take a look at um, Professor Leiter. Sure, sure, I can uh, I can show it to you. Um, I don't There's know. There's just that... a chance. Uh, I don't know if he'd gotten through his belongings already, what was on his person. There's just a few missing items from his office we're trying to track down, and maybe one more look over wouldn't wouldn't hurt. I hope you don't mind. It's not an imposition at all. No, not at all. I, I got word from, from the dean that uh, you were having a look around, and I was expecting you. Well, so uh, well. I'm afraid your um, your brother's going to have to wait outside, though. It's don't really want to be just, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, daunting for one, and, you know, the privacy of the deceased. I'd Got to respect. Oh, uh, I know this. Uh, uh, Shaughnessy's uh, Shaughnessy like is... hand is on your shoulder, and it squeezes at this point. Sh Shaughnessy is uh, was an associate of Professor Leiter's as well. Uh, I knew him quite well. I understand, um, and I, I think it would it would really help him come to terms with it. You know, just to see the professor one last time. Um, is that all right? Uh, as I said, you know, he, he's here with, uh, with 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 my uh, with my approval. If if that makes a difference, can you give me a uh, persuasion test? Sure can. Oh, oh nice! <laughs> all right, it's done. Uh, and and there's no need to mention to the dean either <laughs> that uh, that that Shaughnessy was here. It's just like a personal favor. I, I hope you don't mind. Doctor Wheatcroft goes like, look, look, I don't mind. Uh, I tell you what, here uh, he passes you like a, a a piece of paper, which is like to fill out um, visitors and things. He goes, you fill out the paperwork, write whatever you want. Uh, he spikes the um uh, the, <laughs> the crumpled up paper into a, a waste bin. Uh, dusts his hands, then to begins to lead you deeper down and into the uh, the morgue. Um, you can just write down your own name. No need to mention Shaughnessy. Um, and you follow after him. Um, 
Going down, uh, this is a darkly lit section of it. There's a couple of like um, bulbs hanging up uh, along the ceiling, which throw pallid light into the interior, but the whole thing's cold. So they keep it refrigerated so that the bodies don't decompose. You head down a set of stairs into like a cellar area. And then there's a large glass wall with a single door um, set in the middle of it that looks out into a series of like stone slabs where bodies can be laid out. Towards the back, metal can containers um, can be sealed to preserve corpses for not indefinite but as long as needed um dr wheatcroft heads over and begins to like go through paperwork and and find uh where the body's being stored as shaughnessy just takes in the area um outside as the sun's beginning to set and uh the you know autumn uh it's not too late uh and a chill begins to to uh fill the air um Vivian, you see uh, Anthony Flinders um, making his way back towards the dormitories. He's got on like a large uh, jacket with the collars pulled up high almost around his ears and, and a scarf wrapped around his uh, neck several times and sort of up and over a good portion of his face. His hair's grown since the last time he saw it and it's now like long and greasy and actually just hanging down and around the sides. One of his shoelaces is undone and as he gets towards you, he almost trips over it, stumbling and with a curse, kicking at a rock, which sort of like spirals out and away. Um, he heads towards the doors and unless you stop, you're fairly uh, loud, uh, will notice you. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see him notice me. Vivian, um, Vivian's demeanor will shift a little mm -hmm. um, as he puts on a different persona sure all right um uh anthony comes up and he kind of recognizes you but he you were not super close so he won't he'll give you like a and then go to move past you oh uh anthony uh, i'm terrible yeah. I've, I've been i've been trying to find you i um what are you searching for me for i i think I think you were onto something in in the car. Something funny is going on with uh, Doctor Lighter and I. Well, hang on, hang I, on. Wait, we we can't talk here. There's other kids around. They're they're listening and uh, they're keeping an eye on me. Hey, um, come with me. I know a spot where we can. Uh, and he leads you around the back to where there's like some uh, where the rubbish bins get taken out and kids clearly come back to like smoke and drink uh, there's butts littered around and, and glass bottles uh, he, he he leans in close he says what do, you, what do you mean? you're talking about what happened to Lighter? you know that there's yeah. something weird right? yes yeah yeah no no. I, I absolutely do is why I wanted to, to speak to you I, I mean you said something in the car about things being greater than yeah. than what we suspected and i i think you're on to something i think there's something strange going on and yes. well you're the one who's been looking into it I, I wanted to ask you if you had any theories any leads oh yeah i've i've got theories i got leads too and I'm, I'm i'm beginning to make real progress listen why 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 now why are you reaching hang on did you get sent did you get told to talk to me no of course not who are you on yeah, this I'm... with? Are you working alone on this or is this? No, no, no. So, mm, all right. You're, you're my our friend, Professor Chase, was yeah. asked by the Dean to look into some things that were missing from his office. I don't think the Dean knows what happened. Only the four of the five of us know what happened. I think they're missing something. Dean doesn't and know. And that's why I'm coming. They don't. Nothing. The Dean does not know that I'm talking to you. Okay. All right. Listen, the, the, the Dean's got no idea what's going on here. I mean, I'm only just, I'm only just scratching the surface of it, but uh, Professor Leiter and, and Amelia, I mean, they, they did that whole investigation in that place up near Bennington. And, and I mean, all the weird shit that went on there. Those, those, those guys, they must have, I mean, that family, the Hob House, they must have had, had similar things going on. And, and from what I can understand, I mean, I, I got a, I got a look at some of the stuff they were working on one time. They, uh, yeah. left the office open and I got a look and, uh, wait, there's some, there's some real stuff in there. Real stuff. You, you didn't, I'm, I'm not questioning 
your involvement on any level you, you didn't you didn't take anything you did you didn't take records of anything anything that was strange did you make notes anything from memory we're trying to work out what's going on and i really don't think they understand like you understand the depth of what's going on here i i, I got a quick look at some of it um but it was trivial basic stuff i mean the Salem witch trials, stuff like that. I mean, that's what I'm interested in. And I saw some of it. One of them, I mean, there's there's a document, uh, an old journal, seems to have been actually written by one of the witches that was burned, and I only got a quick look at it, but it had real power in it, real darkness. I mean, uh, it spoke to me when I saw it, and I, I felt a kinship with these witches and, and what they suffered and how they were, they were punished for what they did. And I, yeah, I mean, it... Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think I, I think I know where it is too. I think I know what's happening because Amelia's a witch. Amelia's a witch. Amelia, Amelia's a witch. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I didn't yeah. think it went that deep. It goes, it goes, it goes deeper than that even. And I mean, I mean, Lighter was was cheating on his wife with someone, and I mean. They, they, they were seeing each other, and I, I think I think she might be involved as well. And I, I think it, at some point, it, it ties into the government. I think the new person he was seeing was working undercover or something. Um, she, she, she's working at the, the, the roadhouse, the bar. Uh, sorry, the, the, the restaurant. The restaurant. Can you give me a description of her at all? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I saw her loads of times. Um, yeah, she's got like peroxide, blonde, bleached hair. Um, wears like a waiter's uniform, but I think that's probably just undercover stuff for when she's not working on like government raids and things. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he goes into like an uncomfortable amount of detail of this person that he's clearly uh, stalked. Um, I, I know where she lives as well, if that's useful. And the dress is never not useful. Yeah, I, I, follow, I followed her home. Um, here, but listen, what they've got, I need, all right? Those those documents, the witch papers. I'm the only one that can understand them. And I mean, I go to the professor with this, but he'll just tell me it's not worth my time. He'll tell me that I'm you know, getting drawn up in things. He doesn't understand the power of it and what it what it could what it could do. You know? I told you in the car that words have power. I'm with you on this one. Words yeah. have power. Oh yeah, listen. Take this, and he uh, reaches like inside one of his sleeves and draws out uh, like a bangle that's strapped around anything. It looks like he's taken pretty much just bits of rubbish and tied them together with twine, bits of like feathers and bones and things. And he and he unknots it and he goes, "Carry this with you, and I'll always be able to find you. And then if anything ever happens, just break it, and I'll know." Right. Take if it. If you see anything, yeah, I'll take it. And I'll actually like I'll I'll put it on. It's got little like sort of pentagrams and shit yeah. on it. It's not the weirdest thing I've worn as a costume. It's fine. <laughs> um, I'm just like if you see anything or find anything more, come and tell me, okay? Because I I want to know. Oh, don't I want worry. to find this, and I will. I'll make the same promise to you. If I find anything about these witch papers, I will let you know. We can work on this together. Good. Listen, I, I'm I'm gonna still I'm gonna keep tracking it down and I'm making progress. One word of, of warning though. I think you need to be you might need to step away from Amelia for a while. I think Why? She know that you're around. And if anything if I know anything about witches and trust me, I do. You don't want to be caught by them. Her magic's nothing close to my potential. She can try. Your potential is still potential. It's not actual. If you want to reach that potential, you need to stay alive and you need to stay safe and you need to stay unseen. Do not, you know, I'm not saying stay away from her forever. I'm saying take a step back for a short while until we work this out. Can you give me a uh, persuasion or charm tech? Or fast talk. Oh. I can see fast talk because you're just trying to basically like, yes, you powerful mage. <laughs> uh, do you have a preference? Because I probably I'm... favor charm. I think you're kind of trying to just be friendly with him. Oh, done. Yeah, he kind of goes. All right. Yeah, I can avoid her. I've got other leads to track down. Listen, when should we meet next? I'm in your hands. If I find anything, I'll. Uh... I'll leave a lily 
outside your window. That means that that night I'll try and be here. Good. That'll work. I uh, I mostly operate at night. I love this guy. All good searches of the mystic do. <laughs> he goes, he goes, right. Keep the amulet safe. And then I'll see you soon. And then he goes to like shimmy the window open and climb in through the window into his bedroom rather than go through the front. Probably because he'd get bullied going in. And uh, I think like Vivian will start to walk away and as he does, he just like shakes everything and is like, <laughs> oh, some rolls. <laughs> and then like keeps the, the, the thing on because he's like, this, this is fine. And then we'll go and try and find the others at the morgue. All but, right. Yeah, it's very much just like, whoa, okay. slimy. <laughs> you head over towards the morgue and uh, Tom, uh, you arrived pretty quickly after the others. Uh, not pretty quickly. You're out of breath. Uh, the car's out the front, and the big guy, uh, you can see leaning in, and he's got a, a newspaper over the front of the thing, and he's very slowly piecing his way through one of the sports sections. But he does seem to be keeping an eye out, and as you approach, you can see one of his ears sort of, like, uh, perk up a little bit, and he, and he eyes you out of the corner uh, and sees you approach, but doesn't make any move to yeah. stop you. Oh, I, I, I'll go over and sort of... Um is there like a bench next to the car that i can sit on yeah sure i mean there's there's yeah. a couple seating scattered around so you can go just yeah. under a tree or something sit on the bench and and then maintain a similar watch i figure that if someone's inside look this guy's the muscle and he's the guy in the car i'm just being the guy in the car i don't have a car though so i'm on a bench <laughs> like i'm perfectly happy to be here i, th I think if you know I, I, i'm build two i assume this guy's build two. Oh yeah I you're right we, yeah. you're right I, I say he's the biggest guy I've ever said. I keep forgetting you're huge as well. Yeah, he'd be comparable. I, I might even do a little, like, sit down at the bench, give him, like, a, a, prof a not a professional courtesy. Yeah, he's good. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we'll... Um... Um, we'll all right. In silence. Uh, inside, uh, Dr. Wheatcroft finds the right one and, and draws out a, a metal tray with her corpse seated on top of it. Um, Shaughnessy uh, saunters over towards it and uh, Dr. Wheatcroft begins to unzip like the white covering that's uh, over it. And then, uh, but he doesn't draw it back just yet. As he does, he turns to the two of you and he says, um, it's, it's confronting how he died um we're still working on the autopsy but uh and he pulls it away um the body of professor lighter is laid out before you uh naked except for a small towel to perfect protect some of his modesty um there is a large uh like the t incision across his chest uh, and down the front where they've done a where they're beginning a, a full autopsy but it's been re-sewn back up at least for the moment and stitched uh his face is twisted into a visage of horror as if he's terrified and died screaming uh his sort of like lips are contorted up and almost locked in place uh his teeth have gritted down so hard that it actually looks like they've almost begun to sort of like crack and shift where like you know dental work has come undone and uh the lines under his eyes are screwed up uh, aggressively but it's his eyes that are the most jarring thing. They look as though they've boiled and sort of like cauliflowered up and out, curdling into black crust where they bulge out past the lids and begin to leak down the sides. It's no longer oozing, but it clearly was at some point. Uh, can you give me a sanity roll, please? Okay. I think we just found out what that black shit on the carpet was. What a vivid description. <laughs> It was eyeballs. Uh, ooh. All right. You're going to take a D4 of sanity a loss. A D4. As Yikes. you see your colleague in something Oof. that is... It's it's bad. This is also... I mean, this isn't a heart attack. You've got some first aid. This it may have been the cause, but there is way more going on here. Uh, Wheatcroft kind of shifts a little bit and doesn't try... He's trying not to draw attention to it. Shaughnessy looks over at it and goes, huh, well, he's dead. So that much was right. And uh, doctor, uh, this is not uh, consistent with a heart attack. There's uh, some underlying issues perhaps, but uh, yeah, listen, we're, we're confident it was a, it was a heart attack. We're, we're looking closer and we're gonna continue, but the, uh, the... 
maybe in a pre-existing condition that escalated. He probably does. He's more competent with medical than I am. He probably hits you with some jargon of stuff that sounds, you know, like it was a parasite that it was triggered by, you know, like there's a, a very tense, like a uh, kind of a thread there for how it might be explained. But this, your vibe is he doesn't understand what caused it. A heart attack probably was involved in some way, but he doesn't get this. And he's a little bit unnerved by it. Well, look, um, the, the the thing I can see, uh, it reminds me of something I, I saw in his office. Uh, you know, there is kind of like a, a burning kind of melting action that happened to the full length mirror in his office, um, right about head height. So it, that, that, and that's right where this kind of burning melting sensation has kind of happened around his eyes. There was some, maybe some kind of implement or some kind of accident of a piece of a, a, a machinery or equipment could have happened at, at, at face height that, that shocked him. That, 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 that's, I don't know if that helps at all. Uh, I just thought I'd let you know. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know any equipment that could have easily done this, but if that explains it, then I'm certain that that's probably uh, relevant. He well, stops. doesn't explain it per se, perhaps corroborates in some small way. I, I don't know. Well, it, it, just so long as the, the paperwork stands up and uh, the dean was pretty explicit, we don't want to be drawing too much attention to this, so heart attack it is. He stops talking suddenly, and you can see him looking around the room. Did you hear that? I hear what? Can you make a listen check? Oh, I don't like that. In, in like a morgue. That. That's not fun. That's not yeah, I did hear that. Extreme success. An extreme success. I heard everything. You hear, just for like a moment, like a a tiny whine that you can't place where it's coming from until you sort of twist your head round and you're almost certain it's coming from the body just in front of you. And then I'd like it, to lean over and zip it up. <laughs> you just begin to cover it over. Very slowly. As you do it, Shaughnessy, who didn't seem to hear anything, goes, No? You might be going mad down here, Doc. I mean, it's a weird spot, but, uh... Well, your man's dead, and he claps you on the shoulder enough that you stumble forward a little bit and touch the body just enough to kind of feel the coldness of it and then back and keep the zip back up. Uh, Wheatcroft shakes his hands and goes, nothing then, and uh, goes to start sliding the thing back and away. Um, Shaughnessy uh, says, well, I, uh, I guess that's done. Now all that remains is the debt. Yeah, well, like I said, if you want to leave your uh, contact details where I can reach you, I, I, I'm happy to, you know, once the once the estate's all settled, I, I'll let you know. Listen, uh, what we can do. I think you've done everything you can for us, brother. Uh, we'll have a look around the estate, and uh, I understand he has a girlfriend or something. Maybe she knows where the money got to, huh? You have a good day, and he begins to head out and up towards the car. Oh. Well, thank you again, Doctor. That was very enlightening. Um, I, I really hope you, you get to the bottom of it. If, if anything, you know, it, uh, it'll keep you occupied, right? Uh, is it just you working on this case? Is you getting any of the medical students involved at all? Or is it... Uh, who else is uh, aware of this, I guess? Uh, Dean Fallon doesn't want us to take this any further than it needs to be i'm handling it for the time being if you want to come back and have another look be my guest but truth told i uh i'd rather not get any closer than i have to i think uh big your friend's right uh, something down here uh, ain't good for the health well you know how to find me anyway if you if you learn anything else and uh i'll do the same all right well i appreciate it professor chase i'll uh see you soon um, and you head your way out. Um, so as the uh, as Shaughnessy gets back in the car, which rumbles back, and they they head away, it's getting late. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tom. Do I have caught Shaughnessy, or do I not really have no, time? No, of course, yeah. I mean, he no, gets yeah. out and he goes straight towards the car. He doesn't yeah, eyeball you at I'll all. I'll just uh, stand up and wave and, and head towards him. Um, you know, try to get his attention. Hey, uh, can I help you? 
Hey, yeah, I, I think you were inside with uh, the pr Professor uh, Chase in there. He's, he teaches me. Um, you know, I, I just, um, I figured you you were looking into uh, lighter. Am I right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why? Well, so listen, um, you know, none of my business. So you you do what you you got to do. But um, you know, Ch pr pr Professor Chase and I, we've been uh, looking into lighter because of some missing documents, ac ac academic documents. No, you know, nothing. Uh, I, I think you'd be interested in, but uh, I just wanted to let you know, I did hear um, from the Dean that when Lida's body was found, it had a shoebox full of money. Maybe he was looking to skip town. Um, and I guess I wanted to say, if we find this shoebox, we could let you know where it is. Maybe if you find anything about missing academic documents, historical documents, you could let us know, you know? Hey, thanks kid. Yeah, that's... Uh... That's really useful. Uh, all right, listen. Uh, he still like pulls out a little card and passes it to you. That's where yes. we're staying. It's just the address of like a hotel in town. He goes, we'll be there for a couple of days. So anything comes up, you get in touch and we'll, uh, we'll make it worth your while. Uh, we can keep an eye out for documents or something. I mean, is there any money in that? I'm sure that the university would be able to pay if you found them. All right, well, you have a good one. Uh, you he too. gets into the car and begins to drive away. Um, the three oh. of you reconvene, and as you plan what you're going to do for the night, um, we will park the session there uh, mm -hmm. and pick it up again uh, next week. Um, Anthony Flinders is out there somewhere prowling and practicing his dark arts. Amelia sits at home, um, the only person to have seen the body when it first fell and still possibly having some knowledge of her own. Uh, and Harland Roach uh, vows his revenge on the three of you <laughs> and uh, will surely return to be more of a pain in the ass. Um, all right, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, let's, let's leave it there and we'll pick up next week. Um, so thank you for playing. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, this video will be uploaded onto YouTube. And if you're already watching on YouTube, then uh, this next one will be live on Twitch soon. Uh, we'll be back next week, same time, same etc. as we continue through Crimson Letters. And then once we're through that, we'll look to another book and start playing that. If you have any ideas of what you'd like to see us play, I just had that thought, you should let us know because we check out the comments and we'd love to, you know, point in a direction that you're interested in. Apart from that, uh, the White Bull campaign continues this week as well. That's Mondays on the same stream. And uh, I think there also might be some news about another stream that's gonna be coming up in a week or so. So maybe just keep an ear to the ground on that. Um, yeah, thanks for playing guys. Thanks for watching y'all and uh, we'll see you in a week. Thank, Thank you, David. David. Boosh.